we have talked about how to build a resume, some of the things you need to include and how it needs to look. Now let's talk about uh, the internship applications as well as the interview process. Now, when you have your resume, let's say you're ready to apply, where do you actually go to apply? One of the most reliable sources to apply for internships and to have the most reliable information is gonna be on the company website. Now, if you're looking for internships at Tesla, go to the Tesla website. And I'm gonna show you an example here on where you can look for uh, internships. So let's, let me go ahead and pull up um, your website here. Let's say we're looking for, you know, internships at, um, at uh, Tesla here. Let me go ahead and pull this up. Now let's go ahead and go to the menu. You can find uh, the menu maybe on the bottom of the website on some websites or some have a menu on the top here that says careers. So for Tesla, let's go to menu and we're gonna go ahead and go to careers. Let's click on that over there. All right, you're gonna end up on a page like this. Now, if you scroll down here, you can see that you have the different types of jobs. You have, you know, uh, you know, a way to view at jobs here. But most companies, they're gonna have a section for internships. Okay, this is a, this is gonna be the most reliable place to look for internships. So click on that. This way, you're not going through any third parties. You're applying directly at the company website. Now, if you go down here, you're gonna see some. Let's search for internships. You're gonna see a lot of the internships here that you can apply. High for okay, there's a lot of these, you know, at Tesla and all types of companies. So you are gonna find something that you like. So this is the first place I'll look. If you have specific companies that you want to apply for internships, that the best place to go is to the company website. That way you're not going through any third parties, you are just applying directly to the company. Now, let's say you don't know any companies that you want to apply, uh, you, you want to apply to. Now, the second best place is going to be on LinkedIn, right? Businesses on LinkedIn, you can verify those. And this is all to avoid getting scammed, uh, looking for fake internships that, that advertise fake information. This is all to do that, to avoid doing that. So the second most reliable place is going to be on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, you can look at a job at a job posting and you can click on the company that posted that job or the recruiter and you can actually see their profile or the company profile that should be able to give you enough information to know if it's a real company or a fake company right so company website and linkedin and you you know you send in your applications now if you can't find job if you can't find any internship on those two options which is impossible you can go to job sites i really really do, do not recommend job sites the main reason i do not recommend job sites is that they're not really safe they are sometimes they are going to be safe but there are a few times that they're not safe so you you don't want to waste your time you want to use it as a last resource when you don't have any company websites to go to you don't have any you can find anything on LinkedIn, then you can go to job sites. That should always be your last option. So let's say that you've sent in a couple of applications and now you're starting to get some traction. Now, one of the first things that's gonna happen is you will receive an email. It's either an email or a phone call, but for the most part, it's gonna be an email asking you to schedule a time to talk, okay? And this is what uh, a lot of recruiters and companies call a screening call. So what exactly is a screening call? This is gonna be an, an initial evaluation of who they're speaking to. Think about a company like Tesla. They're getting hundreds of thousands of applications, right? If you think about it, if you're in college, you're a junior, it's about to be summer, Everyone is applying to internships. There's a lot of applications and they don't have enough time to go through every application. You know what they do? They have recruiters reach out to people for an initial evaluation through the phone. So this is gonna allow them to hear what you sound like. It's gonna allow them to verify some things. It's also gonna, you know, it helps them save time instead of inviting everyone to an in-person interview. They can screen you through the through a phone call. So they will ask about you know some of the things that you have on your resume to clarify some things. So are you graduating next year or the year after that? Uh, so how many hours are you gonna be able to work? You know so. Um, are you going to need college credit for this? You know, they're going to verify some things. They're going to, you know, they, they can talk about anything. And this is your time to be, uh, to be a likable person, you know, be a conversational person. You know, this is meant to be more casual, right? This is where they're going to decide if they want to invite you for an actual interview, right? So if they like you, you are going to get and 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 they're going to tell you hey we're going to send you an email to set up an interview it's actually a two step process and you're going to get more information but sometimes if you don't do well with those 
they're just gonna say we'll be in contact and they'll never reach out to you right usually they never tell you during a screening call they'll never tell you that they're never gonna reach out to you now you might get an email that says hey thank you for applying you know unfortunately we went with another candidate um so apply next time so this those screening calls are going to be you have to be likable you have to be able to answer all the questions that you have on your resume you have to know everything you have to be able to uh, you know hold a conversation you know you have to be able to verify everything clarify everything because they're trying to eliminate as many people as they can so they can have a handful to actually invite to in-person interviews now this also saves them money right instead of like you know having uh, the actual hiring managers interview 100 people now they're interviewing 10 people that are more qualified right that they have vetted uh, to be more qualified now when it comes to the interview itself you know one of the things i recommend is even if it's on online on zoom always wear a suit always dress to impress okay and you want to practice your interview questions i'm going to share with you guys a list here of interview questions and uh, you know this is also going to be available for download these are general interview questions you know i i wanted to cover all bases these questions are almost asked at every interview especially for finance uh, majors here so let's go ahead and uh, share my screen here so i can show you uh, these questions all right so one of the first questions you're going to get asked is tell me about yourself right they're always going to ask you this they don't know you they want to get to know you so they are going to ask you tell me about yourself right and you don't want to tell them a story your entire life story you want to keep it simple give them a brief overview of your educational background hey my name is nash i'm in college and i'm you know majoring in finance you know learning uh, financial accounting blah 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 and uh, last year i interned over here i'm part of the uh the finance club club you know kind of like give them just the highlights the really really good highlights talk about your skills uh talk about your career goals and uh you know kind of like you know why you want to get into the finance field right these are the things that they're trying to hear they're not trying to hear uh, about the time that you went fishing they're not trying to hear that okay now the next one could be uh why are you interested in this position or company right this is ob this is one of the obvious ones why are why should we pick you right for this position this is where you want to express you know your 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 excitement how 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 interested you are in the company itself or maybe the job position or the internship or you know if it aligns with your career goals this is where you need uh to be able to shine you know tell them hey I'm, you know, this is what I want to do. I think this would, this aligns with my career. This is what I want to do. And obviously I have the answers on here for you guys to review. So I'm not going to go over, you know, the actual answers, you know, I'm not going to read what's on here. So you guys can review this. Now, the next one would be, um, how do your skills and experience align with this role? This is where you get to shine. You get to talk about the things you've learned in college. You can talk about, hey, you know, I just learned, I took a course in Microsoft Excel and I'm hoping to uh, apply the skills I've learned and also improve those skills. And I also have questions like, um, let me show you here guys is uh how do you approach financial analysis and decision making now they're trying to get into your brain they're trying to figure out how you think how you approach uh, problem solving and how do you actually arrive at making decisions right so you want to make sure that you know you pay attention to detail right because you can't really make decisions if you're someone who does not pay attention to the details you want to make sure that you walk them through your thought process you know the steps that you take take to approach financial analysis right use the data you have and how do you actually make um d decision making because one thing you have to realize is when it comes to finance we use data to make data driven decisions right so you have financial data you make sense you make it make sense and you make a data driven decision so wh whether you're the one that's making the decision or you're recommending the decision to a decision maker which might be a supervisor manager they are making they are making a data driven decision so you have to drill that into your head it is a data driven decision so if they ask you about you know how you would approach anything make sure that you mention i will look at the data if they're talking about uh, financial analysis look at the talk about you're going to be looking at uh the 
uh, the, these are, you know, the balance sheets. I'm gonna look at the risk. I'm gonna look at this. You tell them you're gonna look at the data first before you make the decision. Now you also have, you know, questions that are related to how you handle tight deadlines and multiple priorities. Now this is gonna kind of like, you know, fill you out when it comes to, you know, what things you prioritize. Do you know how to prioritize things effectively? You know, do you know how to manage your time, right? Talk about how you can, you're able to create schedules. Talk about, you know, how you can break things down into small manageable tasks that you can, you know, work on. Now you're going to have questions such as, you know, how you stay updated with uh, changes in finance. Now, what are, this is actually a really interesting one uh, that, uh, you know, you're not always going to get this one, but when you get this, you know, I've gotten it before and I've been shocked. I'm like, well, I don't know the answer to this, right? This is actually to measure, you know, if you are someone who is a continuous learner, right? There are people that, you know, once they graduate from college, they stop learning. But most companies want people that are continuous learners, right? Because once you start the job, you are going to be learning. And in order to be competitive, to have that competitive ed edge, you have to be to know more you have to keep learning right so you want to make sure that you highlight that you know you are you know how you um you stay up to date with you know finance industry obviously it's a pretty simple question if you've uh, looked at this you know you subscribe to maybe financial publications uh you follow industry news and trends you participate in finance related workshops you know some things like that you know maybe you're in a finance network so if you are in a finance club this is where you might want to bring it up you know i am president of the finance club and you know we invite guests that are in the industry you know you can talk about things like that now you're always going to get the question you know asking you for an example when you face a challenging financial problem and how you resolved it this is digging into your problem solving skills how do you perform when you're faced with problems and how do you you know have a solution for it right that's what is that's is, uh, that's asking for now you also have how do you handle working in a team now if you've never worked in finance or uh you know anything related to finance really it's always in teams you always work with teams whether you're a financial analyst that works with data you have to present the data to someone else, right? Because <laughs> you're making the data make sense. So you're always gonna work in a team. There's always a finance team. It's never an individual type of job. So you have to be able to express how good you are at working in a team environment because that that's what it's all about. Now, you also have, um, how, what are your long-term goals uh, in the finance industry? Now, this is one of those uh, questions where you just have to you know, uh, uh, express your interest in the finance industry. You can even talk about if you are going to go get your, uh, you know, uh, 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 a certification like a CFA or something like that. This is where you can talk about that. You can emphasize your commitment to continuous learning and growth. You can talk about, you know, you know, how the company aligns uh, with the, you know, with, with your financial, with your uh, career goals and how you want to grow with the company and become a professional. This is where you get to express now, one of the last things they'll always ask you is, do you have any questions for us? I can't begin to explain to you how many people have said, uh, no, I don't have any questions. You should always, always have at least three questions. When I interview, when I was interviewing, I have 10 questions ready. And let me tell you what, interviewers, interviewers love when you ask questions, because it shows that you're also interviewing them as well to see if they're a good fit for you, right? It's very impressive when someone is asking me questions, if I was hiring an intern or something like that, and they're asking me 10, 20 questions, maybe not 20, you know, five to 10 questions. I'm like, whoa, maybe we might not be a good fit for this candidate. Let me try to sell my company to this candidate. As you can see, you flipped the table right there. You flipped uh, the coin. And now it's my turn to try to actually impress you, right? And you are going to be remembered if you, if you are the person that has a uh, really good questions, you should always have some questions prepared. Now you don't, you can ask job specific questions. You can ask company specific questions. You can ask, you know, there's so many things you can ask, you can prepare for uh, qu so many questions that you can have prepared to ask. Always have at least three questions ready. Never be the person that says, I don't have any questions. You should always, always, always have some questions ready. Now, let's say that the interview, the interview is over and, uh, you know, you leave uh, the interview. Now, this is 
now a chance to send a thank you letter, right? So think about when you were setting up, you know, after that screening call and you got the email to set up the interview, you know, what are your free times? You're going back and forth with the recruiter or the person that you, or the hiring manager, whoever you're talking to, that's the person you want to send the thank you note to. After the interview, you know, a few hours after, or maybe an hour after, or maybe right after, send an email right? Say, Hey, thank you so much for, uh, the opportunity. Thank you so much for, for talking to me. I enjoyed myself. You know, I look forward to hearing back from you, you know, something like that, something very casual. You don't have to send a paragraph, maybe like two sentences, you know, thank you for your time. I look forward to hearing from you. Something like that. That is going to make you more memorable. That is going to make you stand out from, uh, the rest of the people that are interviewing because it's, they're probably interviewing a bunch of other people as well, right? So you always want to do that, right? And um, in a few days, you should be able to hear back <laughs> unless it's one of those positions where they're interviewing like thousands of people. So you might want to wait a little longer. But once you finish the interview, that does not mean that you stop the interviewing process, right? Apply to other places, do other interviews as well. Don't just do one, one application, one interview and wait to hear back. And then if they say, no, you start the application process again, do it continuously, right? You finish this interview, we might have another one scheduled that day as well. You need to do multiple. This is going to increase your chances of actually, you know, landing a job of, or getting one of those as, as an, as, as accepted. So that is pretty much it for uh, this lesson here on how you can, uh, you know, go through these phone screenings, uh, interviews, as well as where to apply for uh, internships. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next lesson.